Hey friends, welcome back to Eye Health Central. I'm Dr. John Legretta, board certified ophthalmologist, and today I'm going to discuss a topic that might be floating around in your mind, literally. We're talking about eye floaters, those tiny specks that drift across your vision. They can be a little unsettling, but don't worry, I've got you covered. Let's explore what they are, why they happen, and what you can do about them. Floaters are small moving specks or cobweb-like structures that appear in your field of vision. They occur when the jelly-like substance called vitreous inside our eyes begins to soften and liquefy into smaller pieces, casting shadows on the retina. It's like having tiny bits of dust floating in your eye, but they're actually inside the eye itself. These floaters tend to be more noticeable when you're looking at a bright background like a clear blue sky or a white wall. It's like they love to show up just when you're trying to enjoy a nice view. So what causes floaters? The primary cause of eye floaters is age-related changes in the vitreous gel inside of our eyes. As we get older, this gel tends to shrink and form clumps or strands. These vitreous opacities can then cast shadows on the retina as they move around within your eye and with your eye movements. So basically, it's your eye's way of reminding you that time is marching on. And really, by the time you hit 80 years old, nearly two thirds of people will experience floaters. It's a club that most of us will join eventually, whether we want to or not. One of the most common reasons for experiencing floaters is what's called a posterior vitreous detachment or PVD. As we age, the vitreous gel inside our eye starts to shrink and pull away from the retina surface leading to these visual disturbances. The American Academy of Ophthalmology states that by 80, nearly two thirds of people will experience a PVD. Symptoms include small specks or cobwebs drifting across your vision and flashes of light due to mechanical stimulation on the retinal nerve cells. If you suspect you have a PVD or notice a sudden changes in symptoms, you really need to seek immediate medical eye attention. Early diagnosis and treatment can help prevent complications like retinal tears or retinal detachments. Which really brings me into my next part, which is something a little more serious, which are the retinal tears and detachments. If there's a retinal tear due to a vitreous detachment or other factors, fluid can get behind the retina, causing it to detach like wallpaper peeling off a wall. And trust me, that's not something you want. And if left untreated, this can lead to permanent visual loss. So what causes retinal tears? Aging, trauma, nearsightedness, and pre-existing conditions like lattice degeneration. If you ever feel like a curtain is coming down over your vision or you see sudden flash of light, please don't ignore it. Call your eye doctor immediately. And when we think about risk factors, age is the most common risk factor for developing floaters. But if you're nearsighted, you might experience floaters a bit earlier in life. When we look at some clinical studies that show younger patients with myopia, the studies reveal that they are more likely to experience symptomatic vitreous floaters. So if you're nearsighted, keeping those regular checkups is very important. And remember, regular eye checkups are essential to monitor your eye health and catch any changes early beyond floaters. And now, floaters can be annoying, but when should you actually see a doctor? Well, Here's the deal, sudden increase in floaters. If you suddenly see a lot more floaters, it could indicate a retinal change. Time to hit up your eye doctor. Flashes of light. These could suggest a retinal tear or a detachment. Don't ignore them. And curtains over your vision. If you see dark shadows moving across your field of view, like curtains closing, you need to get help immediately. This can be extremely serious. An early diagnosis ensures appropriate treatment measures can be taken to prevent further complications. So don't wait, get the eyes checked out. Now, let's talk some treatment options for floaters in general. For most people, floaters are just an annoying part of life. But if they're really bothering you, there are some options. Number one, laser treatment. In some cases, laser vitreolysis can break up large clumps of floaters, but it's not for everyone and should be done by an experienced ophthalmologist. Number two, vitrectomy. For very severe cases, there's something called a vitrectomy, a surgical procedure that removes the vitreous jelly and replaces it with a saline solution. This is much more invasive than the laser procedure 
and comes with risks. So it's usually a last resort. And here's a quick tip. Only five to 10% of people with floaters end up needing surgery. So the odds are in your favor that you won't need to go under the knife. Most people find that floaters become less noticeable over time as your brain learns to ignore them. It's like having a noisy neighbor. Eventually, you just tune them out. If you have floaters, try moving your eyes side to side or up and down to make the vitreous gel swirl around. This can help you see them less. And as always, monitor changes in your floater appearance. If you notice new or worsening symptoms, call your eye doctor promptly. So there you have it, a quick overview and everything you need to know about floaters from causes and risks to treatments and management. Remember, regular eye checkups are crucial for catching any changes early and keeping your vision in top shape. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel for more eye health topics, and leave any questions or comments in the section below. And don't forget to check out our other videos on eye health, especially this video that talks all about retinal detachments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.